Hey guys, and welcome to the part three of this Turbo Falcon build. So in this episode, it's pretty much safe to say it is finished. The motor's in the car, all the intercooler pipes are manufactured, made up. The turbo's bolted on, has oil and feed drain. Um, it's pretty much done. The car starts and all that. I haven't started it yet with the turbo on it. It's a little surprise for you. And we got to make the a coolant reservoir for it. But that's the next episode. That's just all little things. I've made the downpipe for it. It's pretty, most of it's done the hard part. Just have to do the part that wraps around under the calf like a flex joint. But yeah, she's pretty much done. Alright, so we're sorting out the oil feed for the turbo on the Intec AU motor. There's a couple ways you can do it. There's a sandwich plate, and you can use the oil sensor, oil pressure sensor. It's kind of easier if you can find the parts. The oil pressure sensor out off the side of the block. Then what I've got is a T. I've got this, just a male to male, same size as the oil pressure sensor. So we screw that in. So you still get oil pressure. This, so you can screw it into the block. So that's still getting pressure. Then we're gonna tee it with an AN4 fitting in the top. So we have the number one former gasket from Permatex. All right, so while the motor's out of the car, you can take off this back pipe pretty easy and put it in that goes from the water pump. So you've got another pump that comes here from the thermostat housing, another pipe that comes from the thermostat housing that runs down and will join up to the back pipe. All right, so we have this, I would say distribution block, whatever you want to call it, for the coil, the spark plug leads on it. So that kind of sits up in there. So we have our T in here, which fits, but to screw it in all the way, we're gonna have to take off this mount down the bottom, and I'm gonna put some of the sealant on it anyway, so. Take the intake manifold back off and put that up. I just had two bolts in the intake just to dummy fit it up, just making sure this all works out. So we have the oil pickup in here. But it has the o-ring you can't get the o-rings in ford you can maybe order it online i still have the old one it's not good to reuse it it's not good to put sealant on it either because the sealant can break off and go through your engine past the pickup filter so then it's like in there you put sealant on it anyway it's going to be very careful with how much i put on so i've used the ultra black as well which is the highest oil resistance so there's not much on there at all, just a very thin layer, just enough to rejuvenate that o-ring and wiped it away from the inner tube so none goes into the oil pickup. So not much on there at all, just a little bit. Alright, so this platinum gasket is bloody terrible. It doesn't even fit in the rocker cover properly. It just keeps falling out. I'm going to have to put it on the engine upside down. So I'm going to turn the engine upside down to put this rocker cover on because it's just not going to go on properly. It's going to fall out. Lucky it's the rocker cover, which is the easiest thing to change on the whole mode of the gasket, so that can get fixed up later if it leaks. The sump gasket seemed really good. Matsuma is a really cheap brand, but the quality of that sump gasket, was, I was impressed with it. It was actually pretty good. All 
All right, so the sensor in the back of your head, this pipe that you're taking on and off, when you're putting this pipe around the back of the motor, take off this bloody sensor. Do that last, put the sensor on because I just snapped mine. I just snapped my sensor, stuffing around with the O-ring that I now have to take back apart. So yeah, it's a bit, a bit annoying. So I had that pipe on the back, wiring loom's all tucked in nice, bolted on, the leads. So we have the intake manifold. All this is sorted out. I've got to make a a piece, a feed line. I might buff this with the wire wheel, try and make it shiny. So there's this crack in my manifold. I'm just gonna weld her up. So after what happened to Les off Outback Opal Hunters, Aussie Outback Opal Hunters. I don't know if you watched that show, but crazy old bastard was welded next to some fuel canister and some spark from his welder went into the fuel canister and blew up and got like third degree burns on his whole body and I was just looking next to what I was welding and there was an open fuel canister so thanks to buddy old Les showing me what not to do I removed the safety hazard from the work area I don't know what happened. That was pretty interesting. Some sicko turned off my gas regulator to zero. Probably me. But anyway, I was like trying to tick it and it was like sparking up going crazy because the gas wasn't on. And I'm like thinking, I'm like, well, I swear the gas isn't on. But the gas was turned on on my welder and the gas bottle was turned all the way on. So it took me like a minute or two to realize that I was welding without gas. I just kept burning the tungsten out straight away. But I thought because it was like I was doing cast iron and it was all rusty, I thought like that's why it was like heaps contaminated. But actually, my gas was just like turned off. So the bottom two bolts for the AC are missing. I've got to work out why. Don't want to forget this, new rear main seal. So I'm doing up the flex plate bolts to the crank. The torque specification 75 Nm. So what I'm using is a breaker bar on the front harmonic balancer side. And I'm having that fight against the ground as I turn it clockwise. It can't turn over anymore so you know i can do it by myself don't need two people and because the uh, flex plate bolts are torqued at 75 newton meters and the harmonic balance is 125 newton meters um you shouldn't really like what could happen is that breaker bar could start spinning and tightening the harmonic balance and more but because i'm putting less pressure on it that shouldn't happen if it does then there's something wrong So after a great struggle, the motor is in the Falcon. Alright guys, well the motor's back in the car. I got smacked up by the Falcon. Um, well, got me pretty good. It's laying under there. Had the sway bar propped up on the steering rack studs. Had it there for 10-15 minutes, forgot about it. Playing around with this little bracket. The boom! Just got bloody smacked in the face. Right here on my cheek. Alright, so we have that oil pressure sensor T that I put in the motor. Dipstick was kind of in the way. Bit of pry bar, put it down there against the dipstick. Put some pressure on it, slightly bent the dipstick away. Did Made the space I needed, about 10 mil. So I've got a 90 degree AN4 fitting for Teflon, the 200 series I'm pretty sure. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, so anyway, it's a Teflon hose, the higher temp one, the stronger one um, for the oil feed. So we have that. So I'm going to use two 90s on it just because that's what I have here. It makes it work over and done with. So now we're going to go check the length. 90 degree AN4s from EFI Solutions. I had a feeling. I just found a sandwich plate for the motor and the gearbox in the tray of the ute. Completely forgot to put it on. I didn't even remember there was one, didn't see it. Wasn't in the pile of parts because I put it in the tray of the ute. 
that's what you get when you put parts in different spots from other parts so once again from everything being unorganized and i have to do all this extra work and then pull my gearbox out of the car and put it back in again because i forgot to put one little tiny stupid minuscule part in so i'm actually probably just going to leave the sandwich plate out for a bit if it comes to it i might even cut the sandwich plate in half and then just try and slide it in from either side the two halves bolt it up yeah pretty annoying all right so this sandwich plate actually has to go behind the flex plate this is like the biggest thing i've ever stuffed up i think in my life do you think this is primarily a major result of the Christmas holidays and not being able to get parts for months? So then it's been months since I pulled it apart and completely forgot I put a f stupid sandwich plate tucked away in the tray of the ute. I didn't think to look in the tray of the ute. There's literally no other parts in there except for the sandwich plate. I don't know why it was in the tray of the ute, but it's like really stuffed me up. All right, so I have what I made before of the J-pipe in the vise. So I put it on the car. Um, I'm going to cut here. So when I weld the flange on, it should sit pretty flat with that line. That's pretty close to the angle I want the turbo. So once I do that, then I can fine-tune that angle a little bit, play around with it, and um, get it right. <laughs> So we have this T3 flange for the J-pipe on the exhaust. So I'm tapping the threads on it. All right, so we have the flange. So what I've done is I put some marks in the pipe correlated to the turbo on the car so i know which angle to put this flange and what looks kind of the best might tack it on and then after we tack it on I'm gonna go test out the turbo and just make sure it's happy with it everything fits i did have to twist it one way a bit because the front compressor housing was hitting the exhaust manifold but to be honest it actually looks a lot better the way i turned it anyway so i reckon it looks sick so I'm also going to have to try and bend the tube. It's a bit wider here and that could, the corners could come out. Alright, so I've got the J pipe, the J pipe mocked up. Oh yeah, so yeah, it's a bit, um, how you going? Hello. Yeah, so, um, I don't reckon it's that bad there. I reckon that's pretty good. So, like, yeah, I've been beating it off with a hammer and stuff, trying to get those corners to all match up, because, like, well, it was a circle before, and that's not a circle. It's, like, some uh, rectangle with rounded corners. But, um, yeah. So we have the Joseph pipe, I've done the first little tax on it, see how it's looking. Alright, so the AN10 bung has been welded on the sump down here. Taking it off and got professionally welded, it cost me $30 to get it welded on, $10 for the bung. So $40, but that's now a permanent fixture of the sump shouldn't be leaking out here at all so with the j pipe the joseph pipe welded up all right so i finished uh welding the pipe i don't know if welding's the right word i guess it is um my welds are pretty comical comedic not very uh visually pleasing looking but you know i reckon they definitely do the job and i've definitely seen a lot worse there's no holes blown in anything and this time I think I was actually kind of getting in the right spot. I oh, know they've definitely improved from a month ago. So that's where we're at now. Yeah, you know, not the best. This is the first time I tried to weld anything here, but TIG weld properly. Pretty shocking. 
So then two months later with no welding in between, just we've got that, which is a slight improvement. Slight. Looks as good as some content on Brazzers.com. It's pretty good. So because I forgot to put the flex plate on, this is where it's getting cut. So the gearbox doesn't need removed. So the turbo mounts it up. It doesn't look too bad. Alright, so my next problem is the sensor for the steering rack down there. This, if I'm gonna like run it down there, I'd need to bring this sensor, the loom for the lambda, down here with it, which is really close to that exhaust. So to eliminate that, I'm gonna plug the lambda loom in up here under the brake master. And then, so it's got very good clearance there. Hide it away under there. What I'm going to do is go to pick apart, find one of these looms, and I'm going to cut that off, as well as the one I need for the back, the broken temp sensor. And I'm going to get a bit of length down this loom, and extend this around here, and then run it down there, and under, down to the sensor for the rack. So I've got the black bolts to put with it, some spring washers. So by the looks of it, it might be best to change these to like the in-hex Allen key head bolts. Just have accessibility, like you're not going to be able to really turn it properly with a spanner, I don't think. You might be able to. So the other issue is how the size of the head of the bolt with the hex head ones is bigger normally than an in-hex round one. So might not get clearance between the sides of the bolts to put the actual AN fitting on it. So that's another thought. I've actually managed to get them tightened all the way down, but I might have to take it off. So, see what happens. I have the in-hex hex heads little bolts for the turbo drain flange so the problem being they actually sit higher than the original like normal hex head bolts back to square one and we're using the original bolts again white on the new plug for the sensor on the loom to the back of the motor, the one I broke before. So we have this one here that goes to the steering rack down there onto that. So what I'm gonna do is because I don't want it running where the exhaust is for the turbo and again too hot, I'm gonna make it extend the whole loom. All right. So it's pretty much ready to go. Um, I haven't done up the two sensors, so I need to get a new sensor, a temp sensor for the back of the head, and I need to wire up the sensor for the rack, but that's not stopping the motor from starting. So we're gonna turn over. There's no oil in the transmission. I haven't filled it up because I, I stuffed up with the sandwich plate. And I'm gonna cut it and have to take out the tail shaft. It's gonna drain oil everywhere, make a mess. So I'm just gonna leave that out for now. I'm not gonna run the engine for too long. It doesn't have a coolant and radiator in anyway. So it's just to see if it works, which it should. It's just, just want to hear it make some sounds if it does. Oh, I'm actually gonna put some nuts on the turbo cause it's like finger tight with one nut holding it on. Turns over. Alright, so I've cut off one of these plugs at the wreckers 
and then I've uh, well, I've cut off two of them and then I've cut off the wires and soldered them and made a big long piece of loom plug-in wire so I got some heat shrinks we're gonna put that on it then I'm gonna cut my actual factory loom and I'm gonna solder this onto it and then well yeah it's gonna be extendo and like reach right down to the steering rack and like yeah you'll see you'll see oh no all right so you get the little thin black ones maybe i should use the green ones because you never see it so this is already heat shrinked all the way to about there and this is a loose piece slipped on so when i solder it on i can slide it over and shrink it all up so we have the loose blue one with the two little ones in there yeah the green and gold so yeah this one you run that around there so we'll connect it up now Run that down there to the steering rack. This nuts, I'm gonna mark around it because it's hitting on the body here. I'm gonna grind this part of the flange of the rear housing of the turbo away. So, so it clears and then put heat tape along here to stop some vibration if it does eventually hit, um, as well as kind of stop heat. All right, so. The coolant reservoir does not fit with my turbo setup, that's not that worrying. So, I could make, you know, like a metal one, but because this is the Povo version, I was going to actually get this and like cut it into pieces, and then use a soldering iron and melt plastic and reshape it and see it, use sealing on it, and then put like a two-part putty on it. Alright guys, so we have the turbo feed fitting that screws into the top of the turbo for the AN4. Alright, so there's um with these things they also have built-in restrictors sometimes. So if you can see that hole, it's, it's fairly big, but you can see that little pinhole in it. Yeah, you see that? That's a restrictor. So that's about a one millimeter restrictor for journal bearing turbos, which is basically all max speeding rod turbos, that POV guy turbos and old turbos. Um, they normally use a 2.5 millimeter restrictor, which is actually built into the turbo itself, but this is for a ball bearing turbo. So ball bearing turbos have one millimeter restrictors on them. So you don't, uh, so, to restrict the oil flow because if you had all that oil going into the ball bearing turbo it doesn't really actually need that much oil and it blows out the seals and then the turbo starts smoking all that nonsense so with the journal bearing turbo they actually need the 2.5 millimeter restrictor because they need more oil journal bearings kind of like the same style bearings that are in your crankshaft the turbo is the same bearing as that opposed to a ball bearing bearing which is like a skateboard wheel bearing the journal bearing which the max speed and rod turbo has 2.5 millimeter restrictor required so with a one millimeter restrictor it's going to starve the turbo of oil which fucks it up so I've got this kit and it comes with like 10 of these fittings, but the only one that fits my turbo is a one millimeter restricted one. It's in sideways fashion, I'm gonna modify it. All right, so I have the fitting on the drill press, the 2.5 millimeter drill bit. I'm gonna drill it out. Oh, 
uh, guys, so I'm up underneath the Falcon Beast. Um, I've had to pull most of it back apart. I had to take the tail shaft back out. Um, I've dropped the cross member for the gearbox. And, um, yeah, so we've got the cross member here, unbolted, supported with a jack. I'm gonna have to undo all the bell housing bolts and then um, try and split the gearbox and bell here like back of the motor um, a few millimeters so I can slip in my sandwich plate because I cut the sandwich plate into two pieces. Right, so my bits of sandwich plate here, I've cut up so I can fit it without removing the gearbox completely. It's got the dowels, so this here, I'm gonna have to work that out, how to put that on. So yeah, basically I've split the gearbox and the motor and I'm gonna try and put my sandwich plate, sandwich my sandwich plate in the gap. All right, so after an all day ordeal, I have it in. It's sandwich, the sandwich plate. Just put in the car, the vehicle, so while it's all off, I guess I'll show you my actual turbo manifold setup. So what I have is the factory headers, and then I've made an extension pipe from it called a J-pipe with a turbo flange on it. So that wraps around, and pops up where it needs to, and turbo sits on it. All right, so this is my turbo setup. So that's the J-pipe goes on there and you can actually somewhat spin it um, you got that clamp it goes on has the two holes and clamps on pretty straightforward stuff so because I have the do have an external wastegate turbo I need to put a wastegate somewhere whether it be on the j-pipe or on the rear housing of the turbo cross that bridge when we come to it so alternatively i can get a wastegate welded here on the rear housing or one welded on the j-pipe all right so i've gone to my local parts supplier and i've got a transmission kit so it's like a filter and a gasket for the bottom pan of your transmission for the automatics and um i've got a rear output shaft seal for it so it's leaking so you got this here all up it was like 50 bucks for... so what i've also got on the cheap i seen some bloke posted on the turbo falcons group i went and picked it up quick smart ironically like he yeah, posted on turbo falcons right next to me in the same suburb as me like what's the chances of that got a j3 chip the whole wideband kit for 380 dollars it's normally like 500 and something close to 600 um and you have to wait a few weeks to get it so we've got it here 380 same day delivery so got the wideband controller the bosch sensor for it some looms other stuff this is the j3 chip itself so i've been told and all right, so we're just undoing all the bolts on this pan. Um, it's just 10 mils. Just with a little Milwaukee gun, pretty quick. Um, take this off. Lucky how there's no oil already in this. That's why I'm mainly doing this now, because it makes a big mess when there's oil all through it. All right, so when you take the pan off, you have your filter here, and it has that metal little brace thing holding it on right around here that's where it latches on we're gonna have to get it up off there and then the filter will come off so i have this heat resistant tape i'm going to use to wrap numerous parts of the car um, starting with the wiring loom so they don't melt All right, so it's night time outside. I've put the AU back together as like a factory AU, but I still have my oil feed and all that. I've taken the turbo off because I had to put as 
meant to put a new sensor on. I still didn't get a new sensor. I just like bodged it up and put some like epoxy putty on it. Then I s that actually broke. So then I super glued the putty to the metal. I don't know. It's on there now. The wires don't look broken, so the sensor should still work. So like, if it works, it works. The sensors are a hundred dollars for one of these new sensors from Repco or something like for a temperature sensor like a hundred dollars preposterous i put the stock exhaust back on the turbo is not plumbed up so i put the stock exhaust back on so i can just run it doesn't sound obnoxiously loud and then because i've got the turbo on i can put the cooling system on temporarily with the factory reservoir because it's not going to work with my turbo i'm going to have to make a new reservoir so that's all right with the oil feed i realized what i could do is get like a an4 to an an10 and then just like make the feed go into the drain you can just take the turbo on and off and then not have to worry about like oil going everywhere and like you can get it past rego by just taking putting the oil feed into the oil drain take the turbo I'll put the stock exhaust on it uses the same manifold so it's really quick to swap over from like na to turbo this setup's pretty good if it does end up working it'll be sick all right so the falcon is pretty much fully assembled i've noticed a catastrophic coolant leak i've put coolant in it it's leaking from where the water pump is the o-ring on it don't know what's going wrong there but it's, it's really leaking really bad it runs it wasn't starting um the nut that connects like the solenoid for the starter to the body of the starter was loose so I tighten it up, starts now. Try and bleed the lifters because it's really noisy, but. So we have the Falcon set up NA at the moment. The oil feed is going into the drain. The top bell housing bolt is undone apparently. So the problem I'm having at the moment is the back of the water pump, there's like a this pipe that runs down here, that black one under the exhaust manifold, which I just put back on and apparently I have to take off to change some o-ring that I put on a new one but it's leaking because it's the wrong size and I got a new one with mace and that didn't work either so it has to come off again but it's alright because I have to pull the exhaust off anyway to put the turbo J pipe on so I'm just experimenting at the moment so she needed a little bit of help but it does run with a little tick in the rockers Properly, I'm gonna stop in the pulling off. I'd be happy with that on my fucking. So we're practicing, I'd be happy with that, eh? yeah. I'd actually pay I'll be pretty not bad. They, they do the job, so yeah. We're practicing with the welder. We're going to weld some intercooler piping on the AU today, so we're welding up the intercooler pipes now. Just got the um, the MIG welder the, with the alley wire. Um, just doing that. There's some really good welds and some really bad ones. So I oh, was just getting used to it. I needed to go a lot quicker with the welder. I went too slow a couple of times and um, made it one or two holes and I don't know, I had to fill them up. But yeah, I don't know. Some really good welds on there. Some real shocking ones too. So I've welded the first pipe up, it is in the car. All the bad welds are at the front and then it like gets... Keep going, they get better. better Slowly getting better. Started out like this, so... <laughs> <laughs> and that's after it's been grinded for like... Hello. Half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have a new exciting piece of equipment for the Sitting Sideways workshops. We have the Uni Mig today. So I've got a Uni Mig 
182 MIG welder. It's actually been discontinued. They brought out the Uni MIG 185, which does TIG welding as well, but it's lift TIG, which is shit. So I already have a TIG welding machine, so there's literally no point in me getting this like new fancy digitalized one with a lift TIG, because I'm never going to use lift TIG and don't even want to think about it. So, so discontinued 182. Basically the same, it just only does MIG, which is good because I have a dedicated TIG, which is better. And um, it's exactly the same internals as the new 185 machine. It's just not digital and it doesn't do TIG. But I only want to do MIG with this machine. So it works out perfect. And I talked to the guys at Sydney Tools because this was on sale. So normally they had it on clearance for $750. But they had a combo pack for $800 and it comes with a helmet, a trolley, consumable kit, rah, 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 all this stuff. And um, they're sold out in all of Australia. So I went in there and I told them, I was like, bro, like you got this bottle, can you sell it to me today? And then you just like put together a kit for me in the next week and I'll come get it. I just want the machine today. And then he's like, all right, so we made a deal. And instead, um, they put together the stuff off the shelf into like a kit and then like took money off because there's a combo but I actually got better stuff than the combo and paid a little bit extra so instead of the 800 I paid a thousand and thirty dollars but I got the top of the line helmet and all this stuff so pretty good got like a big roll of alley wire so we're all set up now. We can do some MIG welding aluminium. So this is all the stuff we got. 182. Got this helmet. Um, some stuff. You know, consumables, trolleys. We got these. Even though we got one mil wire, the dude that works there, he says he's like, says he's like the boss of Uni MIG or some shit. I don't know. Fort Sydney tools. So he he reckons like the 1.2 mil tips. Um will flow will like work heaps better if i'm using soft wire like one mil wire he said it's just like better i don't know he knows more than me so yeah got the trolley all built up only took a solid hour what's in my fucking box the rig so I pretty much have the welder all set up. I've got to put the wire in it, but got the gas the gas bottle was a bit of a pain in the ass to chain on just because I haven't done it before. And I was trying to do it wrong for ages. Got the big dog here. Just loaded up. Big bag, dirty MIG weld. So we have this uh, welding PPE protection. It's a uh, quite expensive bit of uh, gear. Well, I've been practicing. I was like freaking out thinking my machine was like full garbage and I just got like ripped off and like, I was like, this is like a bloody flux core. Like that's like the quality. I had plastic on the, on the alley. It has this like plastic covering on it, I accidentally left it on and I was like trying to weld on the plastic and then like, yeah. It was basically like I was using a flux core, that's how what I was doing and I was so worried. So anyway, I don't know if you can read that, but you can read that. <laughs> it is 8 o'clock. Yeah, so I'm getting somewhere with the intercooler piping, welding it all up. Gonna have to have some joiners because the pipe bends so much, like you'll never be able to get it in and out. The hot side, before the intercooler, straight out of the turbo. Gonna have this joiner on it. Gonna have to put it through the battery hole, put one joiner in the middle, and then another joiner to the intercooler. So it has three joiners. And then basically same with both sides, so both sides will be in two pieces, so you can take the pipes in and out quite easily. Oh, a big bendy pipe through the car. So, yeah, just gonna have to remain two pieces both sides. Some 
really bad world. Yeah, so like, um, I actually did these worlds like this on purpose. You know, like, I thought it'd be artistic and, you know. <laughs> I mean, at least by the end of it, they were starting to get closer to the mark. I can do really good ones on metal that's just not the intercooler pipes, but any part, I can do it on intercooler pipes good too, just not the ones that I need. So like, I don't know, just practice, I guess. Doing some practice welds. I welded most of the intercooler piping, all the two and a half inch stuff. Um, near the end of it, it started getting a bit better with the welds. Still no, like, not happy with it. I can do ones I'm happy with sometimes, but not consistently. I'm trying to get to that point, still heaps of practice. So. <laughs> Alright, so we have three quarters of the intercooler pipe made up. I'm trying to do the hardest bit now, I reckon anyway, which is this top bit. They have throttle body relocations, which are designed for the B-series, which puts the throttle body actually down there, but you have to extend the loom for it, for like the TPS and stuff. It basically, it just has a flange that bolts there, and it runs along here. And then it relocates the throttle body around here somewhere. That would actually work really well because we can go straight from down there into there. The throttle body relocation kits I think are about like 500 at the starting price for a Chinese one. I'm pretty sure like a good one's like 800 to a grand. Um, pretty expensive considering all that needs to be in its place is just an intercooler piping so try and just make one of those instead but we have this limited space up here which i feel like no matter how hard i try it's still going to look pretty garbage mainly just because this pipe's going to cross over the motor so it's going to look pretty dog shit so i have some stainless filler rods that brandon has so we're actually going to use the correct filler rod this time because I've been welding stainless with mild steel filler rods because I'm a I bought the wrong ones because I'm an idiot. So we have some thinner wire on a little mini spool and then this it's been fucking it's been causing me trouble all day for days. All right. So my machine it says you can use five kilo spools and one kilo spools. All right. So I've got a two kilo spool of aluminium. So I'm like yeah that's a two kilo spool. So been using that. And then I'm like, well, I want to get, I want like a, a thinner alley wire. And I couldn't find it on like a one kilo, because I can only go smallest is like one kilo. So I've been looking for days for like a one kilo spool of like this thin alley wire. To work out at the end, the aluminium's lighter than steel. So this 0.5 kilo, half a kilo spool, I could have used the whole time because it's the same size as a one kilo spool, because it's like, half the weight and my two kilo aluminium spool is the same as a five kilo steel spool so like yeah the more you know eh? all right so this is the big uh five kilo size spool that's actually a two kilo quite confusing and this is one kilo spool that's actually half a kilo so somehow this some fits on there if i unscrew this and rah 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 i think that's something there so i have this like aluminium liner that you're meant to put inside um, your TIG torch, so line it with it, so the wire runs better, which I haven't been using so far, so it might get better welds just by putting this in and using the one mil. We'll see. All right, so we're trying to make the top pipe, which is um, gonna be the main art piece with extra welds like that on it. Um, all right, so, yeah. So yeah, we fucking um, looked at some um, ideas. We looked at some ideas that people posted on the Turbo Falcons group um, for inspirational purposes and maybe masturbational purposes later on. So we have this um, blue yucky silicon uh, joiner right here off the throttle body. Um, now this kind of does a trick. 
we could make something kind of work like this. So I guess put a pie cut in there, put something like that. Um, Mr. Helper Man, would you like to document this? So it would look something, I guess, like that. But with a black joiner. So in comparison, let's put you shove a 45 in there. Well, I would just like, realistically, if you really wanted to, we could just put a straight silver pin on there. No one will know about it. Um, apart from me saying it out loud, but yeah, we just weld a pie cut on there, that angle, make that straight. That's this is option one. So option two is this. So this is version number two with a straight piece that sticks out here. And we're gonna like try and cut that and put that there and like make it come back here, make it all metal. Yeah, it fits in there. Yeah, that's awesome. Does that look? Oh, my. This is interesting. Well, this is what the video is for, so that is like version 2. Cut that probably on an angle there. Make that look like that. Or version 1. So we have the 0.9 wire put in, it's a lot skinnier and um, we don't actually have the Teflon liner, I'm just using the normal liner because like you have to get some other spring thing for the liner which I didn't realise so it's just in there, it's working. So I have a box of goods again, not bad, about 36 hours from ordering time and it's delivered to my doorstep. What's in the box you ask? Oh, we will find out. So in here, we have a poor man's wastegate. So this whole external wastegate, the kit with the V-band flanges in and out was $80. Basically like a knockoff of like a, a tile wastegate or a turbo smart wastegate, which is like four or $500. So. For $80, it's not bad. Actually, like, some of these Turbo Smart Wastegates, I swear, go for like $800 to $1,200. Not really sure what the difference is. Like, obviously, there's a few compared to the $80 one, but blows the same air. Yes, yeah, so this is the poor man's wastegate. All right, so I've cut up this pipe, a three-incher, and I've done some weird little triangles on it. So what I'm trying to do is adapt the 3 inch to 2.5. So I'm not really I'm not really sure if I showed it, but I'm welding up the adapter thing, the 3 inch to 2.5 now. Um, so yeah, I just took out those triangles, bent it in. I made my triangles a little bit too wide, I noticed, I'm pretty sure, and not long enough. So I don't know, there's probably actually some way to like calculate how to do that. So I'm gonna to have to fill in those triangles now. I've made it on an angle too, to come out of that 90 degree bend and go towards the throttle body or the rest of the piping. So I made like a timber guy that has um, 15 degrees and a straight cut on it. Just to try and like, just to try and keep things the same, I don't know. I really need to get a drop saw or a band saw. I don't have space as it is, so we'll see. One day. This might be the last time I see you guys. My nutsack, my nutsack, my nutsack. Turbo Falcon is tucked up. I guess you can set half decent welds here. So I started getting kind of better at welding. So now I have the intercooler piping complete. I have the difficult task of trying to find 
the exhaust flange for the turbo that I have placed somewhere. It only took about uh, 10 minutes to find, so that's all right. We have the flange for the turbo. So, gonna do some pie cuts. I don't have a pipe bend or anything. It's it's a really tight turn I'm gonna have to try and do, and it goes on all funny angles. So I'm gonna have to do heaps of pie cuts and just try and make it work. Problem is, I don't have anything to cut this straight, so I'm gonna be like cutting this with a hacksaw and a grinder. So it is gonna take me ages, and the cuts are gonna be bloody atrocious. So we have um a tool pro cutoff saw they have on sale from 125 bucks down to 75 bucks so i got this cutoff saw so i have this alley box i made a tafe we got like um i do like sign making and stuff we got uh metal benders sheet metal benders so got this aluminium there graves aluminium and um yeah made this up it's gonna be a coolant tank so it doesn't melt i'm gonna Put some sides on it and expand the bottom what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna like fill up the original coolant expansion tank with coolant to the right level and then i'm gonna pour that into this and i'm just gonna see how full it is so we have the tig machine on I'm gonna try and uh weld up this exhaust for the au Yeah, I like the Bosco helmet. This helmet kind of hurts my head. It's the way clearer. It's really heavy when I hold it. Anyway, this is the exhaust. It is getting made up. So unfortunately, because this episode's a little bit long and everything's all done, all the boring stuff, I'm going to save the actual startup with the turbo for the next episode. But the next episode is going to be out very soon because we don't have to do anything. I just run out of gas for my bloody welder, so I, have to, I like to make the exhaust a little bit longer. But it's done. It's all done. I've got to weld up my coolant tank, change an O-ring, all the hard parts done. So... It's not the end. I think I'm just going to turbo another AU right after this. I enjoy turbo and AU Falcons. I think I'm going to make my own turbo manifold next time instead of a J-pipe. So that's what we're going to do because I'm getting a little bit better at welding. But anyway, and I have to turbo the R31. So I have the manifold for that. But yeah, next episode of this all running coming out very shortly. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see some more cars getting turboed, some more really bad welds all that type of stuff stoned blokes trying to work on cars you know where to hit that subscribe button somewhere down there you can like it too if you want catch you later mate